All right, let's make a formal introduction for our listeners. Good afternoon, Derek. My name is Claudia. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, for, from the studio in Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Derek Schulman accepted our invitation to the show. Derek, welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much, Claudio, and nice to meet you uh, from uh, Fairfax to uh, New York City. Thank you very much again. My pleasure. Uh, let, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, there, were you born like in a in a musical family, and how old were you when you perhaps began taking piano lesson or guitar lesson? How the music came to you, to your life? Well, uh, a lot of well, a lot of people know that. Uh, yes, where a musical family uh, was. Um, Oh, yes, I came from a musical family. My father, in fact, was a professional jazz trumpeter, and music was always around the house. So it, it was uh, it was something that both me and my brothers and my elder sister, of course, um, always were were involved in. So uh, and we always had instruments around the house. Uh, my father was a superb, brilliant musician, and um, music was part of. My growing up, uh, it was either jazz, po uh, not popular, but jazz, classical, um, yeah, even popular. Uh, but um, my father was a jazz trumpeter, actually, and a band leader. So uh, that was, you know, that was me growing up on the south coast of England. Uh, I was yeah. born, in fact, in Glasgow, Scotland, as was my my elder brother Phil and yeah. my, my my parents. Yeah. And then uh, where you? Were you in any, any band during the high school years when you were, I don't know, 14 to 17 or something? Yeah, well, if, in fact, I, uh, when I was at school, uh, grabber school, um, I put together uh, a group of uh, my school friends. The Beatles had just, just started, and I, sure. I looked at, the, I looked at the, uh, the, the show, and I heard the song Love Me Do, and I thought it was superb. It was a life yeah. changer, in fact. And... Um, I said, I want to do that too. You know, I, 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 I don't want to be an engineer. I don't want to be a doctor or, or a lawyer. I want to be a rock and roll star. And so I got some friends together and um, uh, little by little we practiced and um, I dragged my younger brother Ray into the band and then my elder brother at some point and we called ourselves Simon Dupree and the Big Sound and gradually we played in the area and all over England and all over Europe, and we became very popular, actually. And we had a couple of very big top 10 hits. Uh, yeah. But that, from, that was from the mid to late 60s until 1970. Yeah. And why you guys didn't continue as a, as a regular band? I mean, I know you have uh, several several hits, right, with with, uh, with Samuel Dupree. Why you guys didn't continue that? Or? Well, the, the truth... Truth be told, uh, you know we were a very good live band, and yeah. we loved. We, we were kind of an R and B blues oriented band. The biggest hit we had was a kind of a psychedelic hit, which kind of was an, a, a kind of an anathema to what we did live. And we started to play venues where um, the audience would expect the hits and not just the band, and that became. Uh, even though the couple of hits were well known and be, you know, top ten, et cetera, et cetera, they became something of a millstone round our necks because uh, the audience just wanted to hear the hits and nothing else. And it, and 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 there was a lot of internal movement in England at that time with different bands uh, evolving into different things, and, and we didn't want to be stuck with just to be a band playing the hits. So we decided that even though we were, you know, still quite popular um, and still uh, making decent money, we didn't want to continue because it kind of felt like this audience uh, was expecting the hit songs and weren't interested in anything new um, and stymied our growth musically and personally. So we broke up the band in 1969, 70, yeah. and decided to put a new band together, which had nothing to do with our past. Yeah. And then, and then, when you at the time, do you have any pressure from your parents to, hey, forget about music? You're not going to be making any money. Go to school, go to the uni, university, and or or the, or or was okay to try it out. No, you know what? I, I, we were lucky. Again, we were. I was lucky. Well, we were lucky, should I say? Um, mm -hmm. Because we came from a, a, 
a musical family and my father was a professional musician um yeah. and uh, my mother was very supportive so we never had that kind of um uh uh i guess um pressure of parents uh saying we should do something a little different uh because this is not a good life no we want they wanted us to be happy even though uh when i became professional if you like we all you know, we, we became professional musicians. We were all in, I, I had a place at university, in fact, but I, I never, ever wanted to go. So I'm, I was lucky, in fact, that, so, you know, we had the hits and we were able to make a living um, being professional musicians. So no, we were, we were never, ha we never had that pressure of uh, expectations from our, our parents, no. I got it, perfect. And then they, you know, they, the three brothers end up forming uh, the, the progressive rock band Gentle Giant, right? With with Kerry and and Kerry. And uh, how how Got difficult it. was it at the beginning? You know, at the beginning, well, you forgot the past from the previous band. You know, you play with the you know with your brothers and, and two great musicians. And and what was the motivation to put put uh, putting together the uh, and you know the, the the progressive band called Gentle Giant? What was the motivation at the beginning? Well, the motivation was uh, the previous incarnation of what we did. There was no room for growth, and we were growing musically. We were growing uh, um, uh, professionally, and being stuck in the pop mold uh, um, was was completely uh, wrong. And in fact, in that time, uh, as I said, the Beatles changed everything. Sgt. Pepper changed everything, and groups like. Um, like bands like uh, King Crimson, Yes, etc. Even though they were in pop groups originally, well, we were all changing. The whole atmosphere in the late sixties were changing. Yeah. We were we were part of that, and so it was. And we had influences of different kinds of things. We just wanted to grow as personal musicians, better for each other, and be a band that could enjoy our own music together which didn't have any influence of any of anything. We didn't care about having set songs. We didn't care about being on the charts. What we wanted to be was a great musical group uh, playing the best for each other and, and, and enrolling, if you like, the best musicians around us. So as you said, the first uh, um, guy we, we, uh, we needed, in fact, in the band, this is the brothers, uh, was Kerry Benier. And he was a life changer for the Schubert brothers because he just graduated from the Royal Academy of Music in composition and, and um, as well as a percussion and had some superb, was is a superb musician and, uh, and, and a, compos a, a composer. So we were very lucky in being able to snag him, if you like, when he was uh, most vulnerable because he wasn't making much money. And we were lucky in the fact that we had a kind of a, a, a manager uh, who um, invested in our growth as as uh, cyber as as gentle giant, and we were able to put the band together without doing any shows um, for about nine months. Uh, someone, a guy called Jerry Braun, and his as a manager who believed in us as, as musicians to put this band together that he had no idea what it was going to be, and I don't think we did, but I knew he knew that we knew what we wanted was a band of musicians to make great music however it turned out yeah and it turned out to be you know excellent right you end up uh going from 1970 to 1980 you were the uh the front man there and you guys end up recording 12 albums with the band That's over here which which is very impressive some band would be happy with one album and and touring here or there but you guys tour all over and and, and the number of albums and the number of hits and uh it's it was it's unbelievable. So you guys have a, a great run. Well, yeah, we we, uh, we did. We were I, that's we had a, a very good work ethic. I mean, we we were we were never um, a band that would um, you know just uh, well number one when we recorded we we uh, we we rehearsed a great deal. I mean, we we had a very good work ethic. I mean, when we toured, we made sure that the tour. Uh, and the the rehearsals before the tours were uh, really put together well before the backstaging and 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 the and the road management and and ourselves being well rehearsed 
um, before we went out on tour in the same respect as um, making albums. Um, we made sure that we were pretty much, um, uh, you know, there's always room for development in the studio, but we we had pretty much most of the music, uh, at least mostly written before we, we went into the studio. So we were never a band that jammed, if you like, in the studio. We had yeah. things written and 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 um and kind of knew where we were going when we uh when it, when we went went in the studio, and so we were a band that um <laughs> you know we, we were pretty dedicated to our music and our and our and our audiences. Got gotcha, you, perfect. Uh, in general, looking back, you you guys were rehearsing. Let's say you you were going a tour in a a month from now. You you rehearsed for like a couple of weeks before you. You go on the road again, and oh no, no, we we'd rehearse a great deal, and we 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 would make oh. sure that that uh, if we were you know, putting on a two hour show, that um, you know, it, it wasn't just uh, us playing music with our you know looking staring at our shoes. What we wanted to do was for them obviously play uh, the music that we had recorded, but in oh. a different fashion. I think I've said this before. Uh, but the music that w was recorded uh, was kind of a sketch for the painting which evolved onto the stage. So um, oh, yeah. we, we, we took, uh, the let's say, um, the missing one, freehand, the album, and, and we were promoting that album. And we take a couple of songs and stretch them out into different kinds of ways that wasn't on the album. So um, no, we... we um, We uh, we 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 rehearsed a uh, quite a long time before, but at yeah. the same time, as, as as well as the music being semi different to what the album was, we made sure that we were entertaining the audience. So uh, whether we could put it together a uh, some kind of visuals, some kind of crazy things that people wouldn't expect, we wanted to surprise people both with our music and the visuals of what we did personally and and professionally. Yeah, that, that's great because you guys have so many great albums, like the interview, the I don't know, freehand, the web power, the glory, and so so forth. So eventually, okay. what in ten years? In what ten years you were recording? In some cases, one or two albums a year and touring. That's that's very impressive, you know. Well, we 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 were we were hard workers. I I have to <laughs> say, uh, you know, yeah. and, and uh, we you know we were never again a band that you know uh, this this is got to sound trite i hope it doesn't um but uh you know we weren't a band to sit around and smoke dope or do drugs and and, and just say oh well let, let's get together next year and and this that and the other we were pretty hard workers so yeah we yeah. did about uh, 11 12 albums in our 10 year history and, and and toured a great deal i mean at least six months a year on the road wow. uh and, and yeah. you know probably more sometimes yeah. um So it was, yeah, we, but we loved doing it. We loved performing and playing, first of all, for ourselves to get better, for our, our own um, enjoyment, seeing what we could do uh, interpersonally, um, mm -hmm. and then going on stage and hopefully that musicality would come over. But at the same time, um, what we wanted to do also is have fun, have fun on stage, and make sure that we had fun playing our music. And hopefully the audience realized that we were having fun as well. It wasn't, uh, yeah. we, didn't take our, we didn't take ourselves seriously. We take our music seriously, yeah. but we didn't take ourselves seriously on stage. So we, we enjoyed playing and performing and entertaining. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's great when you're playing great music and you, you're doing what you love and you're getting paid and... At the same time, you know, it's it's everything's going well. It's is it difficult for a since I'm not a musician, is it difficult to be on the road for I don't know, three or six months, missing missing the, the children, the fam the wife and so the world before the that was before the internet. So you didn't have a cell phone or Zoom like this to call your yeah. wife or relative and you were on oh, the road no, and calling the you know, the landlines You know, you were oh, paying ten yeah. dollars a minute or something, you know. You... No, you're exactly correct. And and uh Yes, it was difficult. I mean, I can't deny that um, some of the time, uh, especially playing North, playing North America, 
um, you know, Europe was a little different because it was you know, in, our, in our back door. We were living in England, um, but playing North America, our first tour was over three months uh, of, of going away, three, three and a half to four months. And you, know, you became a little lonely. You, you wanted to speak to your girlfriend or your wife or, or someone you wanted, you know, you wanted to speak to and, and you were in a hotel room and what you, you had a couple of days off sometimes and, and you know a couple of days off in the midwest of america some was like almost like a two years in prison <laughs> right <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, we got we, we were able to get through it because i guess we knew when to back off uh, we were we were truly a band and we were truly friends uh and in so saying uh we know each other when to back off or when to say hey let's go out for a drink or whatever so yeah we we were yeah it was tough but we, we we were able to get through it and 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 not um get into all sorts of stupid things that a lot of other bands got into like breaking breaking hotel room ups and 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 get yeah. drunk and and, and uh, you know not show up for gigs because you're in stone or god knows what else that's crazy what bands do man you know some people are i don't know in all profession no just it means they're very responsible you know they don't take the stuff seriously and uh, the little money that they make some band they Throw it away. They they do a lot of stupid stuff. Then you know, and they yeah, you I, know. Yeah. I think I think we were all very responsible people. You know, if we had a had a drink after after the gig or or you know whatever it was or some other thing, but really we were all of us. We were very. I, I shouldn't say the word professional, but we were. We 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 wanted to make sure that what we gave the audience, which is the most important thing, and ourselves, yeah. the best possible. Um, incarnation of what we did musically perfect right and then toward the end of the well 1980 you guys decided well why i was you know you were doing well you were releasing a lot of albums touring over the world six months a year and and then what happened that you guys decided well maybe a combination of things but you decided well you know we come to a stop uh, you know this is our last album the last show and as the world went it was any pressure for the record label for more commercial success or yeah I, i think yes what there was uh but it was probably pressure internally as well because uh especially in north america north america was a big market for gentle giant as well as you know germany italy but that was a whole different thing um but certainly if you made it in north america um in the earlier period of time you know the radio which is a big marketing tool back in those days, uh, would play a a album size. They play songs. It was a free form kind of thing. Then radio became very hit record oriented. Um, mm -hmm. So bands you know, that had hits, um, a hit song in album radio would get more airplay than and having more airplay that get more recognition. Um, and I guess uh, we listen, we, we, Gentle Giant as a band um, saw that you know, bands like uh, Genesis were able to come up with a hit song and and make their uh, audience go from, say, 5,000 people to 20,000 people, whatever. Uh, the same thing happened to bands like Yes, etc. You know, they had the Owner of a Lonely Heart, etc. All these kind of things. Uh, and I guess, in some respects, we thought, well, let's try it ourselves. And you know what? <laughs> We weren't able to. We we were horrible at trying to make our music more commercial. So, in some ways, uh, um, it was a shame. But in a lot, a lot of other ways, uh, I'm glad that we we weren't able to because I think the legacy we left was one that was um, more uh, true to what we were, as opposed to being going back to being a pop band, which I'd already been in. In the, in the 60s uh, yeah. so so that was you know and, and also the the creative air the juices were starting to run dry to a certain degree uh, degree you know you and and um there, there's a lifespan and 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 to over to overstay that lifespan what we didn't want to become was um a parody of ourselves and you know sometimes when you get older and and you're you're going to play the same music you did uh say 10 years ago the same track the same then it becomes uh, a semi-parody we didn't want to 
we didn't want to become that, and and we did, and that, that's what we said. Let's let's stop it now while we still can and while we're still popular. Yeah, and uh, you know, you guys have, you know, if I were to look at you know a bad cap or a Spotify or YouTube channel, you have have you know a lot of hits. So you guys did, you know, very well, and still, what nineteen eighty to now twenty twenty three. Um, that would be 43 years, still very popular, you know, still people buy the record, or buy the CDs or listen to, you know, YouTube or Spotify or, or whatever, and still very popular. So you you, did, you guys did a, a great job, man. <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed myself that after this yeah. period of time, there's even more interest for me now than there was yeah. back in the day. So it's, uh, and that, that's that's a very good feeling that we left uh, yeah. I guess some kind of legacy, some kind of, yeah. um, and I, I, I would never have in a million years where we played together thought that in 40 plus years we'd be talking about what we did, you know, with that back then. Right. Yeah, I mean, probably the band, like, still the big stuff that I like there from the, the, the Genesis, the Pink Floyd, the Led Zeppelin, Camel, Gone, Gentle Giant. You know, King Crimson and so many, they're like 50 years old and still, you know, kicking, doing well, and some touring, some not, and some band broke up, but still there's a, you know, yeah. independent of the gender, right? Good music is good music, no matter how you define yeah. it, right? 40 years ago uh, or uh, two weeks ago, you know, it's a good stuff. People are, and as you know, now you're living here in the United States, you know, it's, there's so many venues, so it's a, United States is a big market for, for, a cabin band and for you know all their band that want to tour and keep on touring and do well mm -hmm. for themselves. In uh, right. let, let, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, let me interrupt. No, 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 no. I, I, that's that's that seems you know obviously a lot of bands that, that continue to tour who were back there, but I, I, that's not something that I think we wanted to do. I, I, as I said to you, I don't think we would have uh, enjoyed. Uh, certainly, but I couldn't do it anyway because I, you know, <laughs> we're, we're all a lot older and, and, you know, wearing what we wore and, and, and trying to, you know, um, physically do what we could do on stage would be very tough, you know, in our older age. Uh, but yeah, the, the, but the good, good music is good music. One thing that is interesting to me is that a younger generation uh, is discovering the music via the social media world and the internet. And, 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 and relearning and learning afresh uh, from not just Gentle Giant, from other bands that were mm -hmm. you know, popular in the day. And, 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 and that's heartening to me. That's, that's, that's even though they, they may not um, be the new Taylor Swift or the Jay Z's or whatever they are, they're, 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 there's new, a new generation that yeah. are, um, uh, that are um, listening to, the music that we did and 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 enjoying it and and that's that's heartening for all of us yeah and absolutely and i and i see all the all the show that i go and see here in dc and usually i see like three generations you know people in the early 60s they are bringing the the kid the kid their early 40 which in turn bring the little guys 15 16 18 and, and they say, well, this is what I used to listen to, hear the band, and let's go check it out. Still, you see many, three, three, two or three generations easily in, yeah. in, in, in progressive, progressive rock, if you will, you know. So it's not just the older guy, like you and I, that go see, see shows, you know. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's good to hear. It's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's good to see and good to hear. Yeah, definitely. And uh, in, uh, in 1976, you end up, it was the eighth release of uh, the concert album Conceive as a radio interview, right? Uh, so what was the motivation? I have several questions about that. What was the motivation of putting that together, which was unusual at the time, right? So yeah, interview, You're talking about interview, of course, right? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they interviewed you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's, I think that uh, the motivation, well, I don't know what the motivation was, um, that uh, it was a little well. We we we'd been touring a great deal with uh, the album before. The, uh, I think it was a freehand album, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, at, and which was very successful. Um, and we did we we buy our, we go by uh, radio stations that um, honestly they would be playing uh, 
Black Sabbath or REO Speedwagon or or Journey or whatever, and even and what they'd have to kind of sit and do an interview with Gentle Giant, even though they didn't even know who we were, uh, because we were in town and we were headlining some some show there. And um, honestly, they didn't really know. And so the questions were coming at us like, uh, well, um, you know, who are you? I mean, what 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 is your style? You know, the questions were always the same. And we come back and say, you know, ask us questions about uh, how how do you get that, you know, ninth note in, in, into the, you know, some, some musical questions. But they were always the same questions. So we came back from uh, the tour uh, the, and and... There was a little bit of, um, I guess, uh, not said. We, we, we were a little tired, actually. So I think uh, lyrically, uh, it was somewhat. Um, how can I put this? Uh, not cynical, but you know. Okay, look, you know who we are. Uh, we've showed who we are. Um, don't be asking us questions anymore. <laughs> you know, this is this is who we are, and and. Just listen to the music. Um, so that's kind of what the concept is. Uh, and, and we got a, a, a friend of ours from the Sounds magazine uh, in England to a- ask these kind of dumb questions. And we, we'd all ask right over the top, you know, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. You know, and that's the essence of what interview was about. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. As if they were, in a way, uh, you know, pre-stage, if you will, in a studio, and, uh, and that's pretty much, you know, it's, it's a good answer, it's a good motivation to do it. You guys were very busy touring, you know, especially when you were coming out of the Freehand album and yeah. Freehand tour, which you were all over the world, so. Yeah, we were. Well, I think, you know, with interview, I think, uh, I mean, I think it turned out very, very well. Um, I think, yeah. actually, that um, if we had a little more, uh, just a, a couple more weeks, it would have been probably our best, but I think there's certainly some great songs, uh, music, uh, pieces of music on the album. And, and of course, Stephen Wilson has just uh, remixed uh, the yeah. album. Um, and um, it sounds, you know, Stephen's done a, an incredible job on other albums that we've done. Yeah. And uh, he's done a, the same thing with interviews. So it sounds fantastic. And, in, in the 5.1 and the Atmos mix and everything else. So, yeah. uh, I'm, you know, hope everyone out there is able to listen to it because I think it's, uh, um, it, it, it makes the album sound, uh, as good, if not better than it was. Uh, and, it, and, and Stephen understands the band extremely well and, and knows, knows, uh, that, um, just to em- not, it doesn't embellish. He makes he makes he clarifies each instrument much better. So there's breathing space in the mixes, and that's his that's his um, uh, incredible mark of a superb remixer. And he's a good friend too. Yeah, yeah, especially because uh, the album, you know, the album was always still obviously was uh, the usual stereo album, and then was mixed in four channel and having a you know a quadraphonic. Album in in seventy six still was was a challenge, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we, we didn't was, have the that technology was, that we have nowadays, you know. And we always tried, we always, and, yeah, we always tried some different things. I mean, we tried the quadraphonic mix, and and uh, and um, not many people could uh, could could play it, but nevertheless, we we tried. Um, and uh, it was it was. I think I think it's a very you know, what, you know what there with the top three, four albums of ours. And, yeah. and I think that, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a, it's a very, you know, very strong album there. I, again, I'm just thinking back, uh, had we had maybe a couple more weeks of, uh, breathing time to write a little more, I think it could have been the best, but I mean, it's certainly up there with, you know, I guess some of our you know, more, most lauded albums, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. But we're, let's talk a little bit about this. It's in Wilson. How 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 Steve Wilson will know what he can make it work better? You you guys take a look at the catalog and then approach him, or the other way around? How how who who is driving what? <laughs> Stephen Stephen is a, a friend, but yeah. also a, a fan. I mean, um, my my 
my brother Ray, uh, who um, unfortunately passed away last passed month, away recently, or two yeah, months yeah. Ago. yeah, in March. I'm sorry. Uh, initially worked with Stephen um, uh, on different things because they because Ray uh, was a uh, uh, did 5.1 mixes for albums and and they worked together. And uh, Stephen yeah. uh, said, "I'd love to work with uh, you know Gentle Giant." Your music, and this is this is about way back. We're talking about several years, and Ray said, "Okay, if you'd like, go ahead." You know, so Stephen Stephen approached us, uh, and he, the first album he wanted to do, in fact, was in a glass house. And I wished he was able to do that, but unfortunately, we did not have the um, the multi tracks. Uh, there's still we, this is the only album that we don't have uh, the multi tracks on. They're, for some reason, they've gone. So anyone listening to this podcast or or whatever, if anyone yeah. knows where they are, please let us know. Um, <laughs> so he so he went in and, and the first album he remixed for us was Octopus. Uh, that was several years ago, and then he remixed um, the Power and the Glory, and then remixed the, the Free Hand, uh, and then he did a, a, an amalgam of the first three albums called a Three Piece Suite, and now Interview, and in fact. Uh, he has also remixed uh, the missing piece, which will come out at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Steve Wilson is, has an uh, unparalleled ability to remix all the stuff from different bands and No Man and Porcupine Tree and a tour. And you know, the guys, it's I, and maybe he doesn't sleep. I don't know. <laughs> no, he, he, he has the same work ethic that General Giant has. That's right. He has to work hard, man. That's the only way around, right? Yeah, so if you yeah, want to make absolutely. something happen, you need to, you, you know, work at it. You know, so yeah. that's a kind of it's a kind of one. And I, I think that the the yeah, in addition to the twenty two remix, the original it will include the nineteen seventy six serial mix, the original nineteen seventy six quad, and then uh, obviously five point one is going to be uh, in the in the in in the package. It's We'll we'll have the CD and the Blu-ray version as well, plus a, a color a color uh, vinyl album, which is which I'm looking forward to buying that as well because uh, I love your your guys' stuff, and that is going to be released in uh, what June 16th, so next month, yes, right. a month from now. So. Yep. yep, correct. So we're 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 looking forward to uh, people hearing it in in, uh, in a well, it's it's the same album, but it's a Stephen Wilson remix, and and it, and it does sound. Very, it sounds a lot better because he's he's able to capture the the space between the instruments probably better than we did back then. I mean, he he has the capability and and knowledge, and and uh, we were we always did things in a hurry, and and usually they they turned out pretty well, but not as good as what he is able to do. So we always let him do his thing, and there's not too many times where we said to Stephen, "No, no, that's right." He had, he understands the band really well. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, it's very difficult to do. I mean, you need to know music and understand the band and then take it to the next level. You know, it's a, the level of technology at the time, 50 years ago, wasn't there like it is right now. But it's not just the technology. This guy is very good at what he does. You know, that's very simple. Simple English. That's what it is. You know, the guy's oh, very yeah, he's, good. Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully I will have the opportunity to interview uh, Stephen Wilson one day because I will have many questions for him as well for all the other albums that uh, that he has uh, worked with and you know No Man and uh, Porcupine Tree and so forth. After after your your career, you end up working as uh, became like a, a a prominent record executive, right? For A and R, yeah, Is that correct, yeah, yeah. I, I was A and R for Polygram and then Polygram, became yeah. president pre president of. Uh, at Co Records and Roadrunner Records, and uh, yeah. I have a little, you know, uh, overseeing company now. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that I went. Yeah, I went. I I I became Darth Vader. <laughs> I joined the dark side. The dark side, man. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> That's a difficult. It's so many. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go there, but it's it's a very complicated. It's a complicated. This is, you know, no, to, it, it, it was a, it was actually it was a, it was interesting. Well, for, for me personally, because I you know um, half about nineteen seventy five seventy six, uh, I and probably Ray to a certain degree took over the 
uh, workings of the band, the management. Um, and, and in some respects, uh, I, we kind of learned the ropes doing it ourselves, which in retrospect was <laughs> probably not a good idea uh, because, you know, you, you can only, you know, multitasking and, and trying to be creative at the same time and being business people is not a good idea for most people. Um, but what it did was we were able to um, transition from the uh, being in a band, if you like, to Ray becoming you know a well-known you know, producer and, and me joining uh, the corporate world, if you like, and understanding that that uh, groups and bands generally dislike record companies. They don't trust them. They don't trust the people. And I was able to have the musicians trust because there's not something that a band could say to me that you to oh, you you don't know what it's like to be in a van or you don't know what it's like to sleep on a, on a floor or 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 work uh, you know because I I've done everything you know so I was able to put my experience as yeah. a musician and 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 at the same time understanding what happened on the other side of the business because I was I looked at every one's office and realized on the very first day that and this is going to sound uh, uh, again a little cynical that literally when I joined Polygram I realized it wasn't the music business it was a business of music and it really what it kind of made my heart sink and I said I'm going to make that change I'm going to I'm going to help the musicians see as much as they can to help them become as big as they can no, that you know, I appreciate your honesty, and I and I I assume that because you you level up with the with the sky. Hey, I'm a musician. I know what it's like to be in a bus or or you know finding a hotel at three o'clock in the morning and catching a bus, catching a flight in three hours from now, and be happy in in the next twelve hours because we need to do another gig and so on and so forth, and then we do it all over again, right? So, yeah. but I think it was that was important for them because you're not just. As a record label executive, you were not just businessman trying to make money. You were that always. You need to run a company, but at the same time, you 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 came from a with a musician background, so you knew what it was like. You know. Yeah, I also you know could could listen to a song and and say, why don't you try this chord and why did you try this chord and yeah. and in fact, I, I, to be honest with you, just uh, not many people know this is is I wrote or co-wrote uh, several pretty well known tracks from a couple of bands I I, I signed so. You know, I didn't put my name on them, but uh, but you know, said let's try this and let's sit down with a music musician, whether it was you know Tom Kiefer or Men Without Hats or or wet mm. or, or or Pantera or whatever, and say, why don't you try this try uh, try this chord and see if this works? Um, and you know, not many people, I think, in the position I was in, could do that. Yeah, and I, I believe that uh, you end up signing uh, what. Uh, bon Jovi, that read, and so the big, big, big names, you know, at the time, you know, where but still, it's still good names now, but back in the day, it was, you know, people were, were coming up, you know, uh, they, they were, I, 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 yeah, but they blame me for Bon Jovi. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm, being, I'm trying to be funny. John's a friend, so, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, uh, but nevertheless, I mean, it was, he was, anyway, it was, it was a great time. Uh, and, and and it was a different, completely different uh, situation from what it was, you know, before when I was in a in a band. And, you know, it was a different chapter, and yeah. we all live by by different chapters in our lives. Yeah, uh, hi- hypothetical question: If you have, I don't know, twenty bands X Y Z name, that doesn't, doesn't make a difference the names, right? And you end up signing one or two, let's say, out of the thirty or forty. Uh, what element contribute to say, well, we, you know? This these people are great. They will be the well in the life who can you know release them, make some money on them, promote them. And what what element contribute to for you to decide? Well, I want to sign this band, but not the other one. What are key elements for? You mean as 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 my uh, role as uh, yeah. the music, music executive? Um, well, it's there are two or three things. Number one. Uh, you have to have an incredible amount of drive uh, um, and 
incredible amount of um, blinkers so that nothing or no one will get in your way of your dream. If, if, if you're, that's one thing. Number two is if you try to be like someone else or someone who is so, you know, trying to make the sound like someone else, that will never work. You have to be absolutely unique whether what, in whatever way you have to be. You know, um, I remember when I first saw Pantera, um, and they were playing a little club in, in, in Arlington, Texas. And um, I went down there. You know, I was, I, I'd left Polygram at the time, and it was head of Adno. Um, and I went down to this club in Texas. Uh, and in three songs, I, and there was about 40 or 50 people in, in, the, in the venue. I became a fan. And I, I've been I've been in the business a long time, but when I become a fan and they blow me away, that's when I know they've got something unique. That if they blow me away, they're going to blow everyone else away as a live band. Uh, so they're completely unique in in their in their way of presenting themselves. So someone who does something in their own right, don't try to be like someone else. Don't don't listen. You know, be unique, whether whatever it is, because if you're not unique. Uh, you're not going to make it. You could you could make a decent living, but you're not going to make it. Do something which is yours and not anyone else's. Um, and and so drive being unique and um, and look in this day and age uh, with AI and God knows what else. Who knows what else there is? But um, those things for me and 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 try to play your instrument. Listen, I'm I'm, I'm an old school here, but uh, try to play your instrument and your vocal whatever your instrument is, whether it's the vocals and or your, your personal instrument, as well as you can, and try, try to be great musicians as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, those are, I suppose, they're, you know, key, key elements for any band or any musician that want to make it into the, the world or uh, make a living out of music. And when you were in, in 1988, when you, you became uh, the president and CEO at Correcord, you end up, you know, reestablishing the the careers of bands like ACC, uh, Bad Company, and so forth, which eventually they end up doing very very well. So it's, uh, you 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 know what you do. <laughs> you know, well, one thing is well, one axiom, but the, the second time around is wrong axiom. You you got on the third time around, you you know you need to know what you're doing, right? Well, uh, you know, I, I, either I, that or I'm, I'm full of shit. But I, <laughs> but 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 no, I, I kind of did, and, and uh, I'm happy I was able to, you know, uh, work with the bands that I really enjoyed and 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 help them reestablish. I love ACC. I mean, yeah, they, they were, you know, they they're great guys, and I love them for their incredible uh, simplicity, but incredible complexity. They were yeah. one of the very few bands that uh, their rhythm section was not in the was not in the bass and drums. It was Malcolm Young. That was a that was a unique thing with this band, and that that blew me away. I, that, as a musician, when I saw them play and rehearse, I realized that the record the rhythm section wasn't the ba the bass and drums, which is generally a rhythm section of a band. Out Malcolm Young was the rhythm section. His his rhythm guitar was the band. Yeah. Anyway, it was just, it's just interesting to reflect back on thing you mentioned that ACDC, bad company, et cetera, et cetera, and and, mm -hmm. and, and going on from there. You know, Slipknot, and Nickelback, et cetera. But yeah, I've, I've been involved in pretty big bands, and and mm -hmm. but the inter but the interesting thing as a as a as a thing as something for me is that um, I guess more important than my post band uh i guess for 40 years on the executive side now i reflect as an older man uh, which is which is what i am um being a musician is the most important my years as as in cyber dupree but probably more important gentle giant are the are the, are the best years i ever had absolutely yeah. So you were you were born a musician with your brothers and you always going to be a musician, whether you make money in the you know, as a record label, as executive yeah. and promoting still behind you there was a musician inside you, you know, listen to ACC or Bon Jovi, hey, you know, like you like you say, try this guitar, no, it's too loud or it's too long or whatever. You 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 came from a musician. 
uh, bo- yeah. background. So it, it makes a big difference. You know, some some executives or some record labels just want to make money and they want to produce, you know, whether they like or not like the music or, you know, they want to sell as many. It used to be CDs, vinyl, but it's it's people don't buy that many CDs or albums anymore. And, and it's, what the, what's your take on, on you know, an XYZ band, right? Uh, you know, they 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 have new material. They want to record a new album, and it costs them I don't know a hundred thousand dollars just to put a number. How they recover that investment because they, you know, no, you know the the uh, the sales on CDs and Blu-ray and vinyl are going down down. So they end up recovering their investment, selling a lot of you know t-shirts or you know a book program or something inside the gig to re- try to record that that investment right how how difficult it is well uh, yes it's difficult i mean of course it's difficult especially in in the pop or the rock and and, yeah. and progressive and, and bands that they're supposed to play there's a whole different thing about uh which is a whole different uh um uh musical musical taste where hip-hop hip-hop is massive which uh, I I enjoy right now uh, a great deal because I think they're probably the most progressive, some of the most uh, interesting bands for me or groups or musical entities are, are some of the uh, uh, well-informed hip hop artists. But getting back to your your point here, um, it's like it was when I was first starting a group. Um, What you used to do was get on the road and get and and play and play and play and get good and get better and get more audiences and 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 come back to the same venue when you played to 100 people and maybe 200 people showed up and maybe 300 then you know you're getting good Uh, i think it's become like that again yeah you have to do yeah but to make to think that you're going to become a multi-millionaire from record sales and or whatever is no that's never going to happen but we did. We never did it for the money. I mean, yeah. we wanted to be paid, and it, would, it was nice to put bread on the table and make sure we made a living. But to become millionaires, that was never our intention. As it, certainly in General Giant, it was to make really great music and take it to the public, and hopefully they'd enjoy it and give us enough uh, enough finances so we could, you know, uh, pay the mortgage in our houses and and feed our families, and that was it. Yeah, nothing more. Absolutely, yeah. And on the other hand, in my humble opinion, there are so many bands out there uh, with millions of hits on Spotify, and, so, and the music is terrible. I mean, there's people like that different type of music. You know, everybody like you know, Latin music or hip hop or metal music or electronic music or whatever. It's 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 it, 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 it's difficult. It's difficult to be a make a living as a musician. You know, so. Well, it, it is, but you know what? But look again. It, it's you. The most the most important thing these days, which has come full circle, um, because when you know when we were st- when we were first starting at school, was uh, let's put a band together, let's go out and play. It, it wasn't funny. about uh, it, it wasn't about let's become millionaires. You know, yeah. let's let's put a group together that sounds great and, and makes good music. And I think that's most important again. And and if you're not good, yeah. they don't you're not gonna make it. That's right. Yeah. If you're not good, you're not gonna make it. That that, that should be the, the line of a new album. <laughs> you gotta you're gonna put it you know, you need to uh copyright that that the line or something so nobody can use. <laughs> so and but nowadays I I was checking out last night and you guys on on Spotify, you have like a what, a hundred ninety thousand monthly listeners, and yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, you know, you know, yeah, for a band that they released the last album uh, forty three years ago, or so in nineteen eighty. So it's you know, no, and, no bad. It's, it, yeah, still growing, which is uh, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, surprise to to all of us. Yeah, looking back in your life as a record producer or as a musician. Any regret? Things you would have done differently? You know, you know. Hands oh. high, everybody looks good, right? Everybody could change the past, but in reality, you, any, all of us, no. we didn't, right? So, or were no, you happy? No, with? You, no, you know what? Uh, regret is something that I, we, you, you can never. 
I that no, I have no regrets. I've made mistakes, sure, but to regret those mistakes would be stupid. You you learn by by making mistakes, and absolutely, and you, you, you go to another place and you say, well, uh, if I'm, I don't do that again. So no, yeah. every every move that we made, uh, you know, whether it was musically in Gentle Giant, whether it was Simon Dupree or personally or professionally and as an executive. You know, you know, look, there, there'll be times when there were incredible highs when you had the biggest record in the world and there'll be lows when you thought there was a band that, that was going to be huge and you invested money and they they became stiffs. Or you, know, you, you invested in people that you thought personally that were friends and they turned out not to be. But you can't regret that. You just got to move on and yeah. and 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 enjoy life because it's short and and you know um you know i'm i'm still uh you know just um i'll say this here right now because this is the first interview i've done since my my younger brother ray passed away uh and um life is short and and make the best of it because you know yeah. it's but you know just just be good uh Make great music, and, and and no, I don't regret anything that I don't think Ray ever did, and I don't either, uh, because because life is you're gonna make mistakes, but don't regret them, just learn from them. Absolutely, absolutely. No, your your brother, your whole family was, was you know, great great musician. Your 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 parents did a good job raising you guys, man. <laughs> Thank you. You, well, you we're like, we're, we're, there was a lot of love in our family. That that That's, was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, it was the same. You know, I, I have, I had, I have have a, a great family, a great upbringing. If it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't have the appreciation of music and, you know, the, the you know, the hundred of shows that I have seen and they keep on buying music. And my wife complained, but that's okay. But and my son is going to be the same. You know, I'm going to my with my little guy to shows and he likes some stuff. He doesn't like some stuff, but that's that's his life. You know, I. I, I bring music into his life. I'm not bringing any genre, in, you know. He like this or that or that. That's his life. That's nobody, you know. I, I there's some music I don't like. It's some music that I love it. And uh, but uh, you know, he people need to do what what what, what they make it happy. What kind, what kind of music do you listen now nowadays when you are at home or you you're still involved in the music business? They they call you. Yeah. They, that's it, right? yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. St I still have a company that, that oversees various little things. Uh, I'm yeah. not in the trenches per se, but um, yeah. what do I listen to? Uh, uh, I wish I could say I listen to a lot, but I don't listen to a lot. Um, I go back to the sort of uh, you know, probably the, the earlier. You know, I I love the earlier um, 50s and 60s stuff. I mean, I, you know, I love you know the old. Jazz uh, music yeah. uh, of, of uh, what my father loved, um, you know, Shorty Rogers, uh, the Stan Getz, the, the John Coltrane era. Yeah. Uh, I, I love I love Frank Zappa. I mean, if you want well, one of my biggest was... influences, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I I I will I do you know, and I have become uh, involved actually in in some of the interesting world of hip hop, and and I think a lot of the hip hop. People that, that people don't know about have incredible music, uh, interesting musicality, taste that you wouldn't know, and and they're mu they're very much more plugged into bands like it who are in our world, the prog music world, because they they listen to these little quirky riffs and they make something of them, and I think that is very creative actually in the way they do that. Um, They're probably one of the most creative, you know, some someone like Mad Villain or, or even, you know, um, there's a band called Run the Jewels who uh, who took a song, our song from Octopus Knots and made it into into a track uh, called, um, I can't remember what it was, but it became the one of the lead songs on Black Panther. Um, and they're a very popular hip hop band, um, a guy called Killer Mike, and, and I went to see them and they, they played Madison Square Gardens. Um, mm. And they love the group, so it's interesting that there's a big. Uh, from what I've told, been told, we have a ghetto. Pass. Gentle Giant has a ghetto pass, which means that, <laughs> which means that uh, that the, that that world embraced has embraced um, our our group, 
and loves yeah. what some of them does, which I'm very happy about. That, that's great, man. Uh, feel free. I have only two more questions. Feel free to elaborate your record label or whether a website where people can buy still can buy, you know, Gentle Giant record. If you, I don't know if you guys have a website or your website, man. Feel oh, yeah. free to mention that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. GentleGiantBand.com and and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We have merch. I mean, the good thing is that we we have we have the catalog. The group owns the catalog here in North America. So we're able to help, you know, and have our, our music out there. So, you know, um, on the 26th, the, uh, sorry, the 18th of, of June, the new Stephen Wilson yep. remix is going to be out there. And um, Absolutely. It's a pre-order, yeah. pre-order uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm hawking the album here. Uh, yes, yeah. so we, we, we have a, um, websites and, and Instagram and all that stuff. In fact, yep. my son Noah uh, is, is very much in prison. I mean, it, 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 again, in my family, my son is very much involved in in uh, helping you know, the uh, having the presence of the band um, being visible on the socials. Um, both my yeah. kids are uh, very much in the creative world too. Wow, well, that's great, man. That's very happy for you, there. It was very nice talking to you, and I I hope to meet you face to face one day. And if you are in town again. You know, let me know. You're free to welcome to. You have the best meal of your life here. <laughs> you, <laughs> My uh, I look forward to it. For you to sign and the remixes and autograph, and we can we can have a no beer, problem. one no or problem. two, man. Absolutely, well. okay. It was very nice to meet you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, bye, Derek. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye, Derek.